Hello and welcome. Welcome to the AI Institute. What you need to get started with AI lunchtime training session. I am so grateful that you are giving up your time in the shiny sunshine weather to be with me today. And I guarantee that I'm going to make it worth your while. Everybody's going to get something to take away from this session today. So we're just waiting for some people to join. Um, while we are, I thought I'd share a picture of my plants. Now, my plants don't look like this anymore, thanks to ChatGPT. So not a lot of people know this or did you know that you can upload pictures, you can upload anything into ChatGPT on your mobile, for example, and it will give you answers and it can read your stuff. So you can upload images, video, audio, PowerPoint, PDF, Excel, Word, the whole thing. But here's an example of what I did a little while ago. Um, my plants were not looking very well and I'm a very diligent plant gardener and I was wondering why this was happening and my poor old cat was getting the blame. <laughs> I thought my, my cat was eating the plant or something. So I uploaded three pictures to ChatGPT with the name of the plant and I said, my plant is not doing well, can you save it? And it came back with this, I'm sorry to see your plant has been experiencing some issues, blah, blah, blah. It basically told me that I'm watering my plants too much. It gave me some suggestions on how to improve it. And then further down, it gave me some suggestions on uh, repotting some of my other plants because they were in pots that were too small for them. So the lesson here is that if you haven't tried uploading images on your phone, it's amazing. And um, a few weeks ago, I was on uh, the On Your Curse show on Orshi Radio talking about how I photographed the contents of my fridge and I get ideas of what I'm going to cook. So give us an old emoji. I love a bit of audience participation in these things. So if you look up at the very top at the little react thing, the react button, click that and give us an old emoji. If you have tried doing something like this, if you've used ChatGPT perhaps in your real life for non-work events. So allow me to introduce myself. I am Mary Rose Lyons. I am the founder of AI Institute and we deliver AI courses for everyone. Our whole mission is that we are trying to ensure that nobody gets left behind when it comes to AI. It's a really exciting time to be alive. And I'd love if you connected with me on LinkedIn because genuinely, I love chatting to people on LinkedIn. I love having the conversations with people about all the different things that they're trying and the different directions that hit this whole space is going in. So what I'd suggest is if you're not connected with me already, send a connection request and just say webinar and then I'll know where we met and we can continue the conversation. So in a in a conversation like this about what you need to get started with AI, I was thinking about, well, what do I really, really need to show people if they're at, <clears throat> excuse me, if they're at the very beginning of their journey? So what I thought about was I'll give you a little bit of stuff on how the models work, because I think it's quite important to understand the various different tools that are out there and what they're doing when they're giving us their results. Then the question I'm always asked, first question I'm asked in the beginner courses is, should I pay? So I'm going to address that one today. I think it's a really important one to think about whether we're going to pay for these tools or not. There's pluses and minuses of both. And the other question, which I'm really glad to be asked every time and which we have baked into every single one of our AI Institute courses is about data security and ensuring that we're staying on the right side of GDPR, looking at bias, all of that kind of thing. So that's what we're going to set out to do today. Um, we do have questions. So if you have questions, pop them into the questions and answers box. And then I'm going to allow more time at the end for answering questions and having the chats than actually just me uh, talking at you like this. So please, please do ask us any questions. And we're in a beginner session. So you know what? No question is a bad question. If you have a question and you don't ask it, and you walk away, I will feel that I've failed. OK, so definitely ask me anything. So what you're going to get today, apart from all of that, is we're also going to get the secret to saving time. And of course, as with all of these kind of things, we're going to give you a gorgeous money off voucher for one of our courses that's coming up soon. So let us begin now. 
I do feel the need to give you a little explanation of the, I suppose, the neighbourhood of the AI world that we're hanging out in. I do not want to go too technical on this and I don't want to put you off. But the reason I'm including this is because there's a lot, a lot of hype and there's a lot of talk about AI and there's AI in industry and in healthcare. like AI is everywhere <laughs> and it's only going to become even more everywhere as, as these months and weeks, weeks and months go by. But what I wanted to kind of clarify for you guys is that there's different sort of areas of AI and the one that we're operating in is generative. So I want to just introduce the other two, which is machine learning. And this is like a little bit of a history of AI. So machine learning started out in around the 1950s and it was really came about from this amazing moment where it was discovered that we could create algorithms where computers could recognize patterns. OK, so that was like a groundbreaking thing. Moving on then to deep learning. Deep learning is a very specific type of machine learning. And this was where they realized that actually deep learning models can learn from the features of patterns. So this was like groundbreaking. So this was kind of occurring um, like in the 2010s. But the real moment was in around 2016 when uh, Jeffrey Hinton and others, Jeffrey Hinton is a really famous kind of thinker and, and leader in this space. Jeffrey Hinton and others um, published a document which is really like the basis of artificial intelligence, which is called um, Attention is Everywhere. That led us on to generative, and this is the space that we operate in. And basically, generative AI is where we can use AI to create things. Yes, we can make things using AI. We can make text, we can make image, video, audio, all sorts of cool things. And I'm sure many of you have had a little go at having a play with some of the tools, and you'll see just how easy it is to, to, to get outputs. So this really kind of started around 2019, 2020. But the moment where it all exploded onto our screens was the 20th of November in 2022. So that's the history. I'm not going any more on that. And I thought on the technical side, why listen to me explain it when we can have deep fake Ryan Gosling? So if you want to learn any of the kind of technical things uh, about uh, AI, there's a really good channel on YouTube called How to Fly. And they basically uh, create these deep fakes of different personalities and they have them explaining different concepts. So we'll head on over it's for business right there. Now, how does an LLM actually right. right there? We want to go over to here. We want to have uh, deep fake, deep fake Ryan Gosling explaining what are LLMs. Awesome. Thanks. So what are large language models, also known as LLMs? A large language model or LLM is a type of artificial intelligence model designed to understand and generate human language. It can execute tasks such as translating languages, composing text, answering questions, writing code, summarizing lengthy documents, generating creative content, providing simple explanations on difficult topics, and even engage in human-like conversation. Some well-known examples of LLMs include GPT-4 by OpenAI, Jeff so there is the list of the well-known LLMs. So uh, deepfake Ryan Gosling, thank you very much for that. So back to non-fake Mary Rose Lyons. Um, I'm going to just take you through a little bit on how the actual LLMs work. Now, this is a non-technical edition. OK, I don't want to scare everyone off. If I'm going too technical on this, I want you to take that react button and give me a few negatives. So I'll stop in my tracks and I'll, I'll go back up a level. So essentially what's happening when we're typing in a, a prompt or typing into the box of any of the models like an LLM, like, for example, ChatGPT or Copilot or Claude or any of the ones that deepfake Ryan Gosling mentioned. What happens is that our text goes into a large language model where it is broken down into what are called tokens. And these are treated in various different ways. And it goes off into its database of knowledge. It brings us back an answer. It runs the answer through what is called a system prompt, which just makes sure that we can't be asking for anything like, how do I make a bomb? I'm so glad that system prompts exist. And then it gives us the output. And if you've ever used any of the models, you'll know how absolutely quickly this happens. It's super fast. It's just super amazing. So that's what's kind of going on in the background when we're using the models. 
Now, I like to think of it a lot like this. I love my music. So the record player would be kind of like the LLM or the large language model. It's the powerful piece that without it, nothing could happen. Right. And then you have the apps. They sit on top of the LLMs. These would be like the records or the vinyl that play the music. So apps might be things like, for example, Fireflies, which is a meeting note taker you might have had a look at, or Gamma, which is another one that's used for presentation making. You might have tried Runway for playing around with video. So these are all the apps and they sit on top of the LLMs. So I hope this is making sense to you. The thing I would really like to point out is that you don't need to be on top of every single thing that's coming out. There's a lot of hype and there's a lot of noise in this space of generative AI. And I I found like there's a lot of people on LinkedIn sharing these like, you know, these are the top 50 models that are the top 50 apps you need to use. Or here's my favorite prompt list. And you know what, guys? They don't really work for you and I because that's their favorite prompt list. So they tend to be quite generic or they tend to be just particular to the work or the craft that they do. So in our courses, we all of our courses are uh, cohort based learning, which means that we have AI for sales. So we have a whole bunch of salespeople learning together. We give you the, the apps that you need. We give you the prompts. And then there's an awful lot of magic that happens in session where you're with a group of your peers and you're bouncing ideas about how you might use these prompts and these apps in your work. And then you go away and you do it. And you come back the next week and you share with it with your tribe as to how it went. So that's our model. Live training, learn with your tribe. You don't have to have the top 50 prompts from people you don't know. You just need to get the curated ones that we give you. So the next question is, should you pay for it? OK, now, before I go into this, I just want to remind you that we're already paying for quite a lot of tools. Like, for example, Clavio is an email tool, $45 a month. That's just for email. We have, you know, Sony PlayStation has like so many different layers of pricing. Anyone who's got a Sony PlayStation person at home will know what I'm talking about. Hootsuite, probably the most overpriced social media scheduling tool on the market. Ninety nine dollars. All it actually does is schedule social media posts, you know. So we have all of this culture of paying for stuff. So when it comes to paying for artificial intelligence, or as I like to say, the rocket in your pocket, you need to decide what is valuable to you. So firstly, I'm going to talk you through the kind of features that really are key in the different LLMs. And then I'm going to show you which models have which ones. And you could perhaps decide what you're going to go off and have a look at yourself. So the first thing is multimodal. So multimodal, like my plant uh, example before, is where you can upload something that's not text and it can it can actually see and read your and compute what you've uploaded. So you can upload an image. You can put up a PowerPoint file. You can put up Word docs, Excel, PDFs, audio, video. You can put everything into them now. What I love when I'm carrying out data analysis is I can upload screenshots, which would be images. I can do CSV files and some PDFs, drop it all in and then run my questions and run my analysis based on that mix of different things. So anyone who's basically sat down maybe to work out some data, um, you can find you, you'll find that you spend a lot of the time trying to kind of get the different uh, data formats together. That's no longer a problem with multimodal. The second thing you might be interested in is some of the tools or some of the LLMs create images for you. So DALI is the famous um, image generating tool that comes with Copilot and ChatGPT. Um, for me, I don't think it's so important because I prefer to use Midjourney, which is another image creation tool. But, you know, you, you may prefer to have it all in one in one package. Another question you need to be asking yourself is, does the tool that you're using have Internet access? Now, a lot of the times I would find that I want to do something like I want to review one of our pages and review it against maybe the top ranked uh, competitors. And I want maybe ChatGPT to advise me what changes I need to make to my page that all of the other competitors that are more highly ranked than me have. So you really needed to have the Internet access to do that. Obviously, that's just one example from from the world of my world. I'm sure you have many examples in your world where you just needed to be able to read the Internet. 
The cutoff window, I'll tell you, not a lot, not a lot enough people are talking about cutoff windows. I think it's really important. So anyone who says to you, oh, you know, ChatGPT has read the internet. They're wrong. ChatGPT has not read the internet, okay? Or none of the models have read the internet. Instead, they have been trained on a, a large amount of data. And what's important to know is what date that data cuts off. And we'll be looking at that in a moment. So, for example, you don't want to be working on a model where the information is all two years old because two years is a long time in, in this day and age. And a lot of things have happened since then. AI assistants, you may have heard of, for example, GPTs or on Claude now they have a thing called Projects or on Copilot they have a thing called uh, In Studio. And now on Gemini, which is the Google model, they have a thing called Gems. These are assistants where you can build your own model to sit on top of the LLM. So what do I mean by this? Well, ChatGPT has been trained on a lot of information, but it hasn't necessarily been trained on my information, my information on how we do things around here. And with an AI assistant, we are able to build our own models of how we do things around here and then run the AI on that. So more info on that in a moment. So AI assistants, really, really powerful. And the final thing is how many tokens your model comes with. So the tokens are when the when you put in your prompt into the model and it's converted from words into tokens, like numerical values are attached to it. But if you think of it like tokens are kind of almost like word count, but not quite the same number. So each model comes with a certain number of tokens in a window, which means it's up to that point. It will process your requests and give you answers. And after that point, it just stops. And if anyone has ever been going really deep on your favorite model and digging around and getting it to do lots of different stuff and then it stops, it can be extremely frustrating. So that is why your context window or the number of tokens is really important. So just looking at three of the models, ChatGPT, Claude and Copilot, this is just a look at what they offer in their free tool and what they offer in paid. So as you can see, um, ChatGPT and Claude cost $20 a month. Copilot costs $30 for Copilot Pro. Now, the only problem with that is you have to pay annually in advance. Copilot does not have a free trial. I really wish Microsoft would sort out their pricing on this because it's a big jump to get people to pay upfront without having had a go at the model. But once they do have a go at the model, it's pretty awesome. OK, so the great thing about Copilot is that it integrates with all of your stuff, all of your Word documents, all of your Excels, your team meetings, everything. OK, so it is a really powerful tool. And for anyone who has invested in Copilot and you know the way Microsoft products, sometimes you just need someone to show you around. Well, we have a really good half day uh, crash course in Copilot that we've put together that literally takes you through each section and shows you some of the things you might get stuck on and some of the kind of cool hacks. So that's coming up in October if, if you're a Copilot user. Going back to look at the other things. OK, so freebies. Uh, Copilot uh, is the only free one that has access to the Internet on the free. With the cutoff dates, OK, you're looking at um, April 2023, April 2024 on the paid. You know, it's important if it's important to you about the, 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 the I suppose, the age of the data you're working with, you might look at that. With the AI assistance, most of the tools will allow you to create them on the paid, but they'll only allow you to view on the free version. And to me, that's an absolute game changer. Those GPTs are awesome. Um, finally, the context window, you get a larger context window on on ChatGPT paid. Most of the others give you the same size context window now on free versus paid. But really, just to sum up, I would say ChatGPT is a really versatile all rounder tool. And if you haven't decided which one you're going to go with yet, it might be worth just paying for a month of it and see what you think of the experience. If writing is really important to you, as a lot of marketers, I know you're out there, um, elegant writing, best one is Claude. Everybody will, will, will concur. Anyone who's used all of the models will concur that the writing style of Claude is just brilliant. It's much more closer to the human than any of the others. So go with Claude maybe for a free trial or even just try the, the free version for a month um, and see what you think of it. 
And then Copilot, as I said before, the beauty of that is it's all about the workflow and it connects with all of your apps. So that actually brought us on to this graphic. I don't know if anyone saw it on our LinkedIn page. We were celebrating the fact that Coldplay has been in Dublin. Um, give us an old emoji, anyone who got to see Coldplay in Dublin. I'm extremely jealous. Um, so basically what we were saying was like if AI brands were bans, I think um, thanks to Copilot, um, Microsoft has really moved on from being a kind of a dire straits to being a cool Coldplay. Um, so that's that's where we're coming from with that. It's a bit of a kind of a an LLM in joke, which which I hope you understand. So back to the ecosystem. Um, don't be put off when you see these kind of graphics being shared on LinkedIn and X and Twitter and and other places like that. This is a, an image that came out last week. Um, Andreessen Horowitz, which is one of the big VC firms in the States, it's their kind of top 50 of the AI tools. So as you can see, there's a lot of tools on there. You know, me 18 months ago, I was madly stressing out going, oh, my God, I have to try every single one of these tools. And now you now has to go, you know what, I don't have to worry about these. You can trust that we will demo the ones that you need in the courses and you don't have to bother your heads with anything else. And not only will we demo the ones you need, we'll give you the best prompts to make them work really well. Uh -huh. So concerns, OK, concerns that people might have about using uh, generative AI in their work. And there are very many. And you know what? You may find that your feelings are the same as a very famous person who just announced this overnight. It may fascinate you or scare you, or if you're like me, it may do both. So let's take a breath and find out more about it. I've gathered some of our country's leading experts to answer all of our questions. You have invented something that's going to help us invent everything else. Yeah. It's happening faster than you guys thought. Absolutely. How are we even supposed to know what is real and what isn't? AI and the future of us. No Bruin for Special. Thursday, September 12th on ABC and stream next day on Hulu. Right there. I know I what I'll be doing the next day. I'll be doing a, a probably a, we're, we're looking at doing a kind of a maybe a live watch party together. So Oprah Winfrey said that she's excited by it and she's also a little bit wary of it. And give us an old emoji there if any of you are feeling the same way yourselves. And it's a very, very, very real um concerns to have. So these are the concerns that were brought out in a really interesting report on the state of Gen AI in marketing in April 2024. The first one was around team training and the need to get your teams trained up. Now, I really hope that for anyone here today, you won't have that worry because you know that you can talk to the AI Institute and that's what we're about. We are all about training individuals, teams and enterprises in bringing AI in a really safe, transparent and practical way so that you get value on your investment in the LLMs. So again, speaking to this point about cost, um, it's a very real concern. You know, if you're worried about maybe like, should I go on free or paid? Imagine if you're looking after like 1300 staff and you're looking at 1300 co-pilot licenses at $30 a pop. It isn't cheap, but as with anything, there is a cost, but the benefits from using AI are absolutely immense, like it, it outperforms any money that you're going to spend. Again, if your trainer team are trained and they're using it wisely. Now, privacy and security come up all the time. And whenever anyone asks me a question about that, I'm always really pleased because it speaks to me of the fact that We've learned from our experience during what I would term, you know, the social media years like Web 2.0, when back then, like the likes of Meta and Google and so on, they just stole our data from us. We, we, we had no awareness of what was going on, whereas now stepping into the artificial intelligence age, first question people ask is like, what about my data? Is my stuff being trained? Where is it going? And that's brilliant. So I'm going to show you a couple of things about that coming up in a moment. Data scarcity and poor quality content, that was just ones that came up in this particular research. It was about like, will there be um, quality content in existence forever to train the models? And the answer is kind of yes. And then the last thing I would like to mention is around bias. 
OK, now there's a lot of talk about bias. You might have seen the stuff that happened when Google Gemini came out some months ago and they were showing us all these crazy pictures of popes and they were being very sort of ultra politically correct and it was demonstrating bias. But I, I want to show you some bias that I uh, it may fascinate you. I want uh, to, it may fascinate ah, you Oprah, or stop. scare you or I want to show you some bias that comes up when we're using mid journey or the visual tools. And what I would like to emphasize is that every single one of our courses includes a section where we're highlighting the bias and we're highlight the, highlighting e issues of ethics and data. And we talk about AI policy. Never has the word policy been as sexy and exciting as it is in our AI Institute courses. So here is an example of bias in action. I was giving a training to a group of Australian educators back at the start of this year and I typed into mid journey Australian woman age 45 and this is what I got. Now, if there's anyone in the group today uh, who is in that age bracket, I know that you're not looking like that. This is just age bias built into the system. So I know and I train people how to work around these biases. And if you put in Australian woman looks happy because we have to say we look happy if we're looking for women images over the age of 30 and you get these images much better. Top left is the one I went with. So if you're using DALI or you're using Mid Journey and if you're finding you're not getting the image, make sure you say looks happy or looks excited and you'll get much better quality images out of it. The thing that kind of annoys me is that the Australian man age 45, where I didn't say looks happy, he's kind of handsome. OK, so there's an example of bias in action. Now, when it comes to data privacy, OK, I said I'd come back to that. Copilot and Claude do not train your data when you're on the when you're on the paid version. OK, so it means that you can be working away safely. Happy days. ChatGPT, however, you do need to know how to turn it off. So I'm going to show you that now, actually, because I think whether you're on the free or the paid version, it's very important that we have this setting set. So what you do is you go into your ChatGPT, uh, you click on your head shot up in the top right hand corner, you go into settings. Then you go into data controls and there, my friends, is the single best piece of UX writing that I've come across in a long time. Improve the model for everyone. So most people would say, of course, I want to improve it. No, 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 you don't. You don't want to improve the model for everyone. You turn this to off. OK, mine is already off. So that means that when you're using ChatGPT, it's not taking your data and it's not training the model on the back of your stuff. So if you haven't got that one already set, Go and do it now. Now, if you do make a mistake on ChatGPT and, for example, you put out some information that you really shouldn't have, like, for example, a list of email addresses or, or your credit card bill, for example, there is an opt out form that not a lot of people know about. And in the opt out form, which is available on openai.com policies, you can literally click to make a privacy request and then you just tap in, you paste in the URL of the prompt and then it will come back to confirm that it's removed that prompt from the system. So that's another one, another nice one to know about. So we take you through all of these kind of, uh, I suppose, security and safety settings in every single one of our courses, because it's really important that we know how we're doing it and where we're doing it and making sure we're doing it safely. So moving on to time hmm. now. If I said to you about five years ago that I could give you a tool that could save you literally like nine, 10, 15 hours a week and it will cost you 20 or 30 euro, you probably wouldn't have believed me. But now we know that that is a reality. So when you start using AI in your work and it doesn't matter what work you do, OK, well, a knowledge worker on a computer and. Um, because I used to say that and someone would go, what about hairdressers? OK, AI isn't coming for them just yet. But what I'm saying here is that when you start to use AI in your work where you are the commander of it, you are taking control of what you're going to get it to do. You will automatically save time because you're going to be able to remove a lot of the time consuming tasks that you probably don't want to do. You're probably doing without even thinking about you can take them out of your workflow and then you have these little pockets of time that you can reinvest in doing something else. 
It's going to save you money. So there's myriad ways it's going to save you money. But for example, just on stock photography budgets, they're no longer a line item in my budget because I spend $12 a month on Mid Journey instead. You can improve the quality of your output. So you can use uh, ChatGPT, Copilot Cloud in so many different ways to give you a starting point so you never have to face into a blank sheet. It can give you ideas and then you, the human, are going to come in and finesse it and make it your own. So let us look then at how we're going to reinvest this time or how we're going to save the time from using these Gen AI tools. So this is a visual uh, that's an example of a day in the life of somebody's work. So when we're working with different corporate clients on helping teams to get up to speed with Gen AI, what we try and do is we try and graph down how they're spending their time and what kind of tasks they're spending it on. And then we come in and we train around the ones that can be easily taken away from them by using ChatGPT, Copilot Cloud, whatever. So here's an example. Somebody comes into work, they might have about a half an hour for a client facing call. You know, they might have um, a little bit of deep analysis, you know, nine before the phones start ringing and the emails start hopping. And then you go into this kind of team meetings time. So team meetings, writing up notes from team meetings and um, checking things out from team meetings. We all know it takes a lot of time, as does what I have done as emails, but that could be drafting anything. The writing of emails, the responding to emails, all of that kind of stuff takes an awful lot of time. And then we only have this teeny, teeny little bit of time at the end of our day for learning. So when you start to pick off tasks and learn how to use generative AI, you can redirect entirely how you spend your time at work. So you can spend a lot more time out and about on client facing work. You can spend a lot more time on analysis or indeed if your job is one that's a lot of creativity, a lot more time just being creative, a lot more time on learning. And then you'll see that the kind of the drafting of emails and the, the team meetings are reduced. So this is the future. It's a very real future. And for many people, the future is now. I know that sounds like a cliche, but it's true. So this one I love, actually. So this is just like a nice aspirational goal. Imagine if you could automate so much of your stuff so that you're literally left with just learning, client facing and deep thinking work. So this is the time thinking about, you know, how we're going to redirect our time and what we're going to do with it. This is the time where anthropologists are really coming to the fore because they are making us think about how do we want to live our lives? And that's kind of going into the really exciting part of, of where all of this is going. So a couple of people who I just want to share a few stories, like a couple of people who actually are saving time and making money would be someone like Georgia Visionet, who took our beginners course way back in April 2023. She uh, has a coffee company called Artessa Coffee based out of Carrick on Shannon. Now, Georgia came to me and said, I really don't like marketing at all. But she followed all of the different examples that she was given and she applied AI to not just creating content, but also to ideating and coming up with new product lines and new ways of marketing her business. She told me that she basically was getting increased sales from her online shop of 24 percent within the first six weeks. I spoke to her recently and she told me that all three lines of her business are really profitable, much, much stronger than they were before. And she puts it down to what she's been doing with AI. So what she did was she went really deep on, say, social media, and then she had a social media person before doing her work. So now what she does is she does the planning, she does the copy, and then the social media person is now making much better quality videos. And we all know the videos and images, videos in particular, are what really fly on social media. So George is doing really well and George is going to be coming back to join me and Claire Dupre. We are launching an advanced marketers course on the 8th of October. That's going to be something. It's basically where we're teaching people how to create AI powered automations. So if you're familiar with with automations in your work, you know, you're setting up emails to do different tasks. Now we're actually bringing in AI powered automations so that you're bringing in the different models and we're, you know, it's like it's like automations on, you know, steroids. It's so I'm so excited to deliver this course. 
there's um, George's website, Artessa Coffee. Go and have a look at it. She creates all the images herself on Mid Journey. Like she's just done such an amazing job. Another person I wanted to mention was Dear McCorkin. So Dermot is a financial planner from Chartered Capital. They're based out of Clonmel and he took the beginner's course in February of this year. Dermot was so excited about the power of time saving. He has implemented amazing uh, shortcuts that get the job done on the really monotonous stuff that financial people have to do. You know, all the know your client stuff, you know, hello, what's your name? Where you come from? So he's he's automated all that, but it still seems really personal. But the really cool thing that he and I worked with worked on was this whole idea of creating a GPT around the revenue pensions manual. So anyone who's familiar with financial planning will know that the Revenue Pensions Manual, it's this really thick Bible set out by the Revenue, our tax office, as to how you have to treat all the different aspects of pensions and finance and so on. It's it's massive. It's what financial planners have to refer to all the time. Um, so what we did was we created a GPT called Pension Pathfinder, which I'm now going to show you in action. And basically, this GPT is going to go over to it here now. So you'll see it over here. We have it in Pension Pathfinder. So what I did with Dermot was we downloaded 18 PDFs of the manual and we uploaded them into this GPT, which we fine tuned a bit. And now whenever Dermot and his team have very specific questions, the likes of which they might have had to refer to page 96, go on to page 422 and so on. They basically just pop their question into their GPT, which is secure. No one else can see this. And they get the answer of 10,000 euros. So anyone who's financial might have been calculating that in their head, but now you no longer have to. You just have to create your own GPT that sits atop the model and away you go. So week three of the beginners course, we show you how to create GPTs and I'll take you through some of the most common use cases for GPTs. They really are an amazing, powerful uh, tool that you can have in all the tools that you use to to do your work. They save so much time and they can be fine tuned and customized and they're, they're really easy to create. So what else do I do in the course? Well, I'm your I'm your course deliverer uh, for the beginners course and it's starting on the 17th of September. So it's coming up soon and we have week one. We're looking at uh, the landscape and we go very deep on showing you how to do really good prompt engineering structures. That's the kind of, I suppose, the language of how you're going to get what you want out of it. We'll also get you started immediately on productivity apps that you can use for meetings, for slide decks, for summarization. So it's really practical. You'll be doing in the course, in the sessions, which are all run live. And then you'll basically meet up the next week and share how you got on with the group if you if you feel like it. In the second week, we do we go deep on data analysis. We do image creation. We do do all that stuff around policy and uh, privacy and so on and, and looking at the EU AI Act. And in the third week, we build out our GPTs. For example, we'd be building GPTs for proposals, for grant applications, for RFPs, anything you do like this. Like there was someone who was recently saying that he used to spend 12 hours per government tender and now he spends four. So I think the government may have to change the way they do their tenders. But until now, there's a moment of arbitrage. So that is the course. It's running over the 17th, 24th and 1st of October. So if you sign up now, you will be using AI in your business before Halloween. I guarantee it. It's a game changer. So. As with all of these kind of lunchtime things, we have a deal for you, my friends. So the price of that course is normally €399. Euros, and I'm giving you all, yes, indeed, thank you for showing up, €99 Euros off. So all you need to do is use the code START now. So um, Monica's going to put the link to the beginner's course into the chat. And when you click that and put in the code START now, you get it for €300, Euro, which is we're, we're nearly giving it away at that price. So other things that we have going on that are coming up, you might be interested. We have a podcast that is starting on the 17th of September. 
And that's where it's really cool. I love my job. All the kind of cool people that I meet who are out there in the world implementing AI in different organizations, I get to talk to them and ask them for their tips and advice on doing what they're doing. So if you're interested in how do we go about bringing this, this is definitely, definitely a podcast you need to tune into. So it's called Chatting GPT. And uh, keep an eye on our socials and our emails. We'll be alerting everyone when the first one comes out, which will be very soon. I can't wait for that, actually. It's going to be brilliant. So just to round up on what we have looked at today, I wanted to give you three basic things to understand before you really get into the world of generative AI. I hope you understand a little bit more about how the models work. I hope you have a good understanding of how you decide whether you're going to spend or not and whether you're going to go with paid and which model you're going to go with. And I hope as well that we've had a good enough look at the privacy and the bias issues to hopefully put some of those concerns um, at bay and to give you some ways of overcoming them. So before we go into questions, I have one ask for you, and that is this. We are a fairly new business. I think we're, we started last December, so we're now like, hmm. You know, nearly 10 months old and we need to improve our search engine ranking. So the more reviews we get on our Google, Google My Business listing, the better it is for our SEO. So if you liked anything at all that you saw today, if you just hold up your phone to this QR code and click the link on it, it'll take you over and you can say anything you like. Please give us some uh, reviews and it'll really help us rise through the ranks. So, as I said at the top of this, I, I really genuinely love when people connect with me on LinkedIn. I have so many conversations with really, really cool people, people who are starting, people who are miles down, really advanced. I just love having the conversations and the chats. So please do connect with me on LinkedIn and just say that you're coming through from the beginner webinar because I get a lot of those uh, connection requests. And if I see webinar, I'll know it was you and I'll accept and we can continue the conversation. So with that, I would like to open up to questions. Um, brilliant. I didn't want to go too long on the talking. So now I'm going to hand over to you for any questions that we have. Now, will this be recorded to watch back? Um, yeah, what we're going to do is we have a free mini course on our website and we're going to put this in with the free mini course. So you'll get this plus the free mini course. So you know, we're, we're going to give you we're going to give you lots and lots of different assets. So we'll be sure to send that one out there. Um, any other questions that we have? Let's see. Um, no, I don't see a huge amount of questions. Great. You're all um, you're all um, you're all good there. Right there. Here we go. How often do the courses come up, Linda? Good question. Um, yeah, well, the we're kind of running them all year round. Like, for example, we have um, beginners and marketing are in September and then we have co-pilot sales, advanced marketing and AI for events in October. So just to mention AI for events, that's a really cool course. It's basically for all those people in organizations who have to organize events and end up just because they're an organized person being the event person. And what we discovered is that a lot of them feel quite insecure that they, do, they don't think they're doing it the right way. So the AI for events course is a course led by a really cool events person that everyone knows and loves. And it's basically how to deliver an event and then augment all of that with AI. It's, it's really, really big time stuff. So that's kind of like the the velocity that we do them. We also are doing kind of specialist ones that we're putting together for different membership groups. We've done a lot with recruiters. We're doing some with financial bodies and um, a retail organization over in the UK. So you can have us any time of year, any shape or size. You just need to choose for yourself. And as I say, the courses are all cohort based. So, you know, <clears throat> You could put everybody onto the beginners course and then decide you want to stick your sales people on the sales course and the marketing people on the marketing course. And I meant sorry, I forgot to mention we have a data analytics course coming in the start of November. You can put your data people on the data course. So I hope that answers your question. And thank you for the question. Can you explain a bit more about context window with re regard to copilot? Yeah, sure. So context window is the amount of I'm going to go back to that slide, actually. So it's basically the amount of space 
you have to uh, ask your question and keep on drilling it down. Or also it can be described. Sorry if you're feeling seasick while I do that. Also, it could be described as when you put in, for example, on Copilot, uh, a very, very, very large document or when you put in a large amount of text um, the number of words or the size of the document gets computed into tokens. So if you're putting a really large document in and then you're asking it to analyze the document and you're asking you questions and so on, you may have used up a lot of your context window by the size of the document itself. Now, 128,000, 200,000 is, is brilliant. Gemini, Google Gemini actually offers the largest context window of all. It's in the millions. But those numbers there, the 200s, 128s, I find that's pretty much enough. Like I'm not taking, you know, eight 500 page PDFs and bringing them together. I'm going to be bringing together things like, say, um, a lot of like data from Google Analytics. Um, I might have um, images. So that kind of thing for me works really, really well. So the what can actually happen is that if you put in a, a huge amount of uh, text, for example, and you go close to the context window to the top of the 128,000, it might actually forget some of the things that are at the start of the article. It's a little bit like a human, you know, if you, if you inundate with a lot of information, sometimes it can forget the start. So that's why being aware of the size of the context window is really important. And back, um, back in the early days, about a year and a half ago, um, a lot of the models were competing on context window size. So the various different things that they go after at the moment, they're all racing to get voice. Um, and as you can see, remember back in April or May this year, ChatGPT got into a bit of hot water about using Scarlett Johansson's voice. But now it's got its new voice model out. And that's like almost instantaneous answers. It's, it's just amazing. So, <coughs> excuse me, Pamela, I hope that answered that question. Gives an old nod if it did. Um, what else have we got? Well, this oh yeah, um, and I've answered that already. Cool. So that's pretty much um all I had for you today. Um, more seasickness coming up here. Sorry about that. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, going through all the people. Um, there's me. Please connect with me. Um, that's pretty much all we had from you for you today. One thing I would mention, if you did like this, um, you might want to join us tomorrow. We have another one on tomorrow. Monica can put the link into the chat for that. We're doing a marketers special tomorrow because that's my tribe. Same time, same place, different content altogether. So do feel free to come along to that. Thank you very much for joining me. I've been Mary Rose Lyons of the AI Institute and you've been great. Thank you so much. Thanks.